In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about NAT, or Network Address Translation, for your CSENT and CCNA certifications. NAT is super important. Pretty much every home router or business or organization's router uses Network Address Translation. In fact, IPv4 would not have survived this long without NAT. In other words, we all use private addresses on our home networks or on our local area networks, and those private addresses are not routable across the internet. Addresses like 192.168.1. whatever 100, or, or addresses that start with a 10, or addresses that start with 172.16 are all private addresses, private addressing from RFC 1918, which says private addresses in these ranges are not routable across the internet. If you want to use these addresses on your LAN, then when it crosses your router, they need to be translated or network address translated to a public address. And so pretty much all routers do this if you're running an IPv4 network, which most networks are IPv4 networks. So IPv4 has survived because of private addressing and network address translation. Also, I think pretty much because of classless addressing, the fact that we can um, we don't have to adhere to strict IP classes, we can do subnets and, and we can do whatever we want with our uh, with classless networks addressing and classless routing. But NAT is super important for the um, functioning day-to-day -day functioning of, of basically the internet. So in the CCNA, you're required to know how to configure NAT. And in this video, I'm going to go over different types of configurations that you need to know. One, we're going to configure a static translation, a one-to-one -one translation where you translate one public IP address to one private IP address. And in this scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to translate one public IP address to our honeypot server here in the demilitarized zone at 10.0.0.240. And what we're going to do is we're going to translate this address right here. And when people go to this address, this public address, it'll get translated to this private address. So that'll be a static translation one to one. We're also going to configure um, a port address translation, which is a one to one translation across a port also. And we'll use port 80. In other words, when people contact this company at this public IP address on port 80, it'll get translated to the web server over here on port 80 at 10.0.0.250. So it's also a one-to-one -one translation, but only if you contact this public address on port 80 will it get translated to the private address on port 80. So this is what you'd see in a web server scenario. Um, this other type of static translation is what you might see if you had a honeypot and you wanted it to be very visible, let's say, on the internet, and draw people in across any port. The other type of translation that we're going to look at is a NAT overload translation. A NAT overload translation, also known as PAT or port address translation, is the most common type of translation and it's the type of translation that happens on everybody's home router um, and that is you go to the public address and it gets translated to all of the private addresses on the private network. In other words, most people have 10 or 20 or 30 devices on their home network or on their small business network. And all of those devices, when they go across the router, get translated to one public IP address. And the way that works is because port numbers are attached or overloaded. And these random port numbers are part of the translation and allow us to translate one public address to many private addresses because the port number gets attached and that identifies the specific computer. So we're going to cover that. And then also we're going to cover dynamic address translation where you have a NAT pool. And we're going to do that over here on this side of the equation. And the NAT pool is when you have multiple public IP addresses. Like in this case, we're going to have a bunch of public IP addresses and they get translated to a bunch of private addresses. And also this can be done with um, overload or ports as well. So we're going to do both types. And the first thing I want to talk about, and this is really important for your um, certification exam, and that is according to um, 
Cisco, depending on which router you are. So let's say right now this is our company and we're this company router. So your company router, the interface that is on the local side is known as the inside local. Okay? And then on the public side, let's say on gigabit 00, zero that's facing the internet, this would be the inside global. So if this is my company and my router, I have my inside global, which is faces the public or, or the WAN, and then I have my inside local, which faces my private network. Okay? Then anytime I contact someone across the internet, this is the outside global, right? For if I'm the inside, then this this router over here would be the outside global, and this would be the outside local. Now, vice versa, if I'm this router, see it says your router, from my perspective, if I'm this is my router, well then it's the opposite. Then we have to say, well, no, this is the inside global, and this is the inside local, because this is my router, and this is the outside. So it just depends on which router you are, which one you're configuring. I mean, if this is your router, then you, this is your inside local, and this is your inside global, and these are the outside. Okay, so it just depends. So for this tutorial, I'm going to start here, though, with... We're going to start from the company router. So I'm going to switch this up. So that's the outside. This is the inside local and the inside global because I'm the company router right now. And we're going to start off with our first translation, which will be a static translation, a one-to-one -one translation. And what we're going to do is we're going to use... Um, so if this is our public address, 209.165.100.30, which it is, if I hover over here, you'll see that there it is on the left-hand side. You might see 100.30. So this is our address. We're going to pretend like this company owns a few public addresses. And it just so happens it also owns 209.165.100.29. So it owns both of these public addresses. And it wants to use this public address so that when people contact this public address, they get forwarded through or translated through to the Honeypot server at 10.0.0.240. So it's going to go 209.165.100.29 to 10.0.0.240. And that will be the translation. Okay, so we'll go into the company router. We'll get into global config mode. And the first thing that we want to do is for our Cisco um, operating system here, we have to tell it which one is the inside interface and which one is the outside facing interface. Okay, so which one faces the WAN and which one faces the LAN. So in this case, interface gigabit 0 slash 0 faces the WAN. So that is our IP NAT outside. And interface gigabit 0 slash 1 faces the LAN, so that's the IP NAT inside. And the full command is IP NAT inside. In this case, I put IP NAT out, which is short for IP NAT outside. So in other words, this is the inside facing interface, and this is the outside facing interface, which is confusing because I just got done explaining that according to um, the terminology, this is the outside. So it's a little confusing but IPNAT inside over here, IPNAT outside on this interface. Okay, so slightly confusing there, but you get the picture. Okay, and now all we need to do is put in our command. So IPNAT inside source static translation, and we're going to statically translate from 10.0.0. .0 .0 240 to 209.165.100.29. And that's it. That's a static translation from the private to the public. And that should work now. And let's see if it if it works. If it works, then we should be able to reach this honeypot server by putting in the public address here. So we'll see if that works. I'll go to PC0 and I'll go to the web browser and I'll put in 209.165.100.29 and hit enter and boom I hit the honeypot. 
So notice the public address. I put in the public address from PC0 here, and it was translated through the router to the honeypot. And that is excellent. So there we have our first successful translation. Okay. So now we want to do something similar for this web server, except we want this server to only be available on port 80. So it's going to be similar. So instead of using a separate IP address like we did for the honeypot, we're just going to use our normal address that's assigned right now to this interface gigabit 0 slash 0. So 209.165.100.30. And we'll use that IP address. Now, we do not have to go back in and set up the IPNAT outside and the IPNAT inside. We don't have to do that again. In other words, we don't have to do this again, right? IP NAT outside. We already did that. We don't have to do that again. But if you want, I'll just show it one more time just to make sure that you realize that, yeah, this is what has to be done to get it to work. You just, it's just that you only have to do it once. Okay. So there you have IP NAT out. And we didn't need to do that, but I did it anyway. Okay. IP NAT, this time, what I'll do is I'll go back to global config mode. So there was our command before, IPNAT inside source static, right? This time it's going to be slightly different. Only a few modifications will get this to work. First of all, this time we're translating to 209.165.100.30. And the other address is 10.0.0.250. So I can just change that to 250. And then a couple other things that have to change here. This time, the translation is just over TCP port 80. And then over here, I have to also put port 80. So as you can see here that now IPNet inside source static TCP from this private on port 80 to this public on port 80 and vice versa. If you contact this public address on port 80, it'll get translated to this private address on port 80 and you have to put the TCP in here to make this work. So this is port forwarding basically in the Cisco IOS, right? So here was just a static translation across all ports or just based on IP, right? Just on IP and you didn't have to put IP in here. It's just an IP translation from one address to another. This is a TCP translation only from this address to this address on port 80. And if we do that, okay, it's done. And what that means is that I can go to PC0 here and go in here and put in, uh, let's see here, 209.165.100.30 and hit go. And I hit the other web server, which is this web server right here. Okay, so this gets translated. If I contact this IP address on port 80, which it is because it's a web browser and web, web requests, HTTP requests, are port 80 requests, then it gets translated over here. Okay, so that works. So now we've got two forms, one and two are done. 